Well, I remember speaking to him before one of his own AACM concerts, and I said, so are you doing some new music tonight? He said, I always do new music. <laughs> it was like obvious. He said, why, you know, why would anyone not? Because that was kind of the implication. It was like, of course, the, you know, it has to be about now, about today, about where you are at this moment. That's what, the pro that's what it's about. That's what it's for, you know. In the 90s, I used to buy a lot of used CDs from this place called Amoeba Records in Berkeley, California, when I was living there. And I noticed that there, somewhere in the A section, <laughs> there was a guy who uh, put out a lot of records on Black Saint, Soul Note Records. And so I was just starting to realize that this guy was a real important force in the music. And the more I got into his work, the uh, more mysterious it got for me because there seemed to be no end to it in terms of the, uh, I mean, it's like all at a really high level and covered so much ground. And I started to realize that there was like something to this that was about self transformation as part of the process. I mean, I, I don't want to misrepresent it. I mean, he may indeed take issue with what I'm characterizing, but uh, at least this, the sense that um, through creative action, you become something that you weren't before. And uh, that was inspiring to me on many levels, partly because I was in the process of becoming and uh, figuring out what my artistic path was going to be, if any. <laughs> and uh, so it came to me at a really pivotal moment. At some point in 97, when I was visiting, uh, I had a sort of extended interaction with him. I went and visited him and uh, we went on a long walk. Yeah, he just sort of, uh, I, I had such a nurturing energy, but also um, really, Intense, you know. There was one gig that was actually the first fieldwork gig ever. <laughs> and it was in the alternate, which was this horrible little prison cell of a room in the basement of a, a knitting factory. And I remember that there at the front table were Muhal, Threadgill, and Andrew Hill just sitting right in front of us. <laughs> yes, Chicago in the house. And that was a uh, you know, it was basically one of the scariest gigs of my life, but also just, um, it was so nice to see that uh, these guys who had been such important creative forces still cared about what people like us were doing at that time. And, you know, especially, you know, we weren't on the map even. <laughs> so uh, this was me and Aaron Stewart and Elliot Cavi at the time. And I remember like afterwards I talked to him and I said, you know, I was so grateful that he came, but also I was kind of mortified to be seen in a room like, or just like that he had to come, any of those guys had to come into that space because it was just so, it was not um, dignified, that's what I would say. I mean, I'm grateful for those early chances to play our music, you know, and that was important, but it was just, you know, to have someone of their, st of people of their stature coming into a space like that was, uh, you know, I guess they'd all seen it all before, so it wasn't a big deal, but uh, anyway, I was a little sheepish or embarrassed. And I said, uh, you know, so he said, he said really nice things about the music, and uh, I said, well, you know, we're just trying to get out of this room. <laughs> and he said, well, play your way out. He said it twice. He said, that's all, just play your way out. And uh, it's true. Which is to say that um, the music contains within it the ingredients for self-transformation. And uh, that's what happened. <laughs> you know, I can say, I can honestly say 13 years later that that's what happened. What people tend to want of a, you know, kind of 
in the sort of jazz mentality is the uh, is to have a sound and then be that sound for your whole life so there's a kind of like uh, resistance to change that emerges in that aesthetic and then when you look at like moments of self-transformation in the history of the music they were met with uh, scorn you know like Coltrane or Miles um, being the most obvious examples when people actually want to move away from what they had established or not uh, not even move away from but build on you know because if you listen to a Love Supreme that's building on giant steps. You could say it's a move away from giant steps, but it couldn't exist without giant steps. I feel like he is consistently built upon uh, his previous achievements. So it's all had this kind of trajectory, you know, that uh, a trajectory of growth and discovery, and also, uh, you know, again, the transformation. And it ends up then also having that transformative quality when you hear it. It's really, it's like I said, it cleanses you and it brings you to a, a new um, awareness.